there are a lot of these stories and these pieces of advice that we hear in society and in the world. And a lot of them are basically just the beliefs of people. You hear people say, for example, that money doesn't grow on trees. And then you've got all these manifestors apparently saying that all you have to do is think and feel money and then you've got all this money. Well, in this video, I want to share what I consider five that are tried and true ironclad rules for life. What's up guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day. Now, the first rule of life, or rule for life, that I like to think about is that it seems like in the short run, takers win, but it's always givers that win in the long run. So when I first started going to all these business and personal development conferences, I showed up pretty naive, pretty green, and I wanted to meet, obviously, all these cool, influential people, just like you probably do when you go to a conference. So I went to these conferences, and I was shocked by how many people were always trying to see essentially if you were someone important, right? They would talk to you about their business and then either they would try to brag about what they'd achieved or they were like slinging friggin' business cards like ninja stars trying to figure out if like this person could possibly lead to a business deal. Now in the short run, that does work, right? The person that uses people, it will work for them in the short run because I mean, if you screw someone over, you never see them again. Well, it seems like, it would seem like in the short run and in the long run, that if you're a taker, it's going to benefit you. That you show up everywhere, you look for like what you can get, what you can get. But the paradox is that, ironically, it's always the givers that are rewarded the most in the long run. The second rule for the game of life, a trait that almost guarantees you some level of success at whatever it is you do, is grit. Now, years ago when I started my business, I think four and a half years ago, I was in a mastermind with three or four other people and we were all apparently super motivated, super jacked up, hungry, wanting a better life. Now, as the calls progressed over and over, there was really just me and this other girl, this woman that were consistently doing the results and doing the habits we said we were going to do. And over time, it was kind of interesting because the two other guys at first were very motivated, very amped up. But over time, like every week was just an excuse. It was like, something simple they had to do and yet in a whole week they didn't do it a whole week went by they didn't do it another week went by they didn't do it now you flash forward about two three years later after three years i just made enough money to quit my job three years all right after three years i made enough money to quit my job and these two guys were still testing business ideas because they just like trying and not not just committing to anything And my business is not really that successful. But basically the thing is, I told myself, once I had established this was the business I was going to commit to, assuming it was working, I committed to it. And so year after year, it progressed very, 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 very slowly. But now here I am, four and a half years later, things are going well and I've produced a lot of things I'm proud of. The only thing, quote, special that I did, I was disciplined. Like every week I created content. Every week, I tried to figure out how to get better. Every week, I learned a new skill for being a business owner. The third rule for the game of life is this big debate, and it is a debate between passion and not passion. So basically, there are people that say, don't follow your passion, follow what the market wants if you're going to be a business owner, or follow what you're passionate about, and like the money will follow, right? That's like another adage I've got a whole bunch of beef with. But basically, it's do you follow your passion or do you follow a profession where there's economic demand and then you do your passion on the side so my experience has been a lot of really successful people are in the passion camp they did work that excited them and there's a lot of really successful people not in the passion camp they just have a lot of discipline cultivated that trait and they push every single day and the thing is both work but if you want to know the difference it's not what externally happens in their life it's how it feels internally So you tell me, you try it for 30 days, tell me how it feels. And it's not about one or the other, but one thing I've noticed is that the people who talk about your passion not being important are people who do not believe that there is work that they could be passionate about that is kind of effortless. And I'm not saying everything's going to be effortless, it's all going to be a cakewalk, but the thing is, talk to people, if you want to do work you love that feels good when you do it, talk to people who've done that. Because if you're not, then you're not going to get advice from people that actually live that actual, that specific reality. If you want to find people that did not do that, 
go find a successful person that's just like highly disciplined. They wake up at five, they hit the gym, a lot of grit. If you want to go into that camp, model those people and only take their advice. The fourth rule for the game of life is that people who win always act before they're ready. And this comes up a lot, especially with creating content on the internet. I've coached a lot of people to go through this process too. And you know what? No one likes or wants to upload the first 1, 5, 10, 50 pieces of content. Because guess what? As soon as you open your mouth and you put it on the internet, anyone can say whatever the hell they want about it. You open yourself to criticism. You expose yourself. If you're in a role or in a profession or a niche where there are actual doctorates, people that have PhDs, a PhD could comment and be like, that's bullshit. That's not correct. And that scares some people. And it's realistic. But the thing is, when I was writing my book, Master of the Day, let's see, three years ago, I was 27 or 28, I had, like, <laughs> all the only belief in my head was I had something important to share. I didn't see a book like that in the health industry. And in my mind, I was just as good as many of these diet and fitness authors. They were not good writers. So to me, I wasn't comparing with, like, the great works of literature, um, you know, American history, literature. It was just like, I have a unique message. I think I can present it. And so for me, I told you the story where the cover was the thing that was annoying me the most about the book. But I set a hard deadline for when I had to ship that. And I shipped that even though I didn't like the cover. Guess what? It was all fine and dandy because three years later, three years later, this cover came out almost to the month. Three years. And it sold tens of thousands of copies in that time. Impacted thousands of people that I've gotten emails from and has provided me with an income that I can rely on that I never would have dreamed of. So imagine if I waited until, you know, uh, uploading videos on the internet on YouTube, I'm going to be the laughing stock of people that have doctorates in nutrition. Uh, write a book, like every author in the world is going to criticize me. But you know what? Every successful person you admire, that's exactly what they did. You just don't know at the start that they felt that way. But almost everyone has felt like they were not ready, but they knew that was the, the level up. That was the next level, and that's what they had to do. So once you level up, then it's going to be a piece of cake. And then there's a new one and a new one and a new one. But you have to act before you're ready. And the trick or the trap is thinking that because you don't feel ready, it's an intuition. But it's not. It's just fear. Now, the fifth rule for life is to win, be yourself. And I know that's kind of revolutionary. It's kind of like a buzzword now, being authentic. You often don't realize it until you have more life experience that you can actually win being yourself. And that sounds crazy. Like for me, as a really introverted kid, I did not share a lot of my opinions or a lot of my thoughts. When I thought other people were being stupid or other people were being rude, I didn't say it. Mostly because of my lack of self-confidence. And it took me a long time to realize, like, I was like a 14-year-old boy reading books on witchcraft and paganism. Like, you're not going to be very popular in any reality, all right? So I didn't know that there was a group of people. Now it's easier with the internet. When I was a kid, there was no internet. You can actually be the most successful version of yourself doing all the things that interest you that are yourself. And the trap is that, you know, you're the artist that became the doctor because mommy and daddy said you should become a doctor to get the safe, secure job and support the family, yada, yada. You've got all this school debt. And then what happens? You've built this career. You impress the whole world. You make all this money. You have prestige. You have maybe fame. You're the best from an external material standpoint. And then you realize, wow, it's like this LA paradox where you spent your whole life trying to impress other people and you became a person that you don't even like and you don't even know. And these people you've impressed, you don't even like them because they want to hang around people that just present this face, this facade. And then one day you wake up and you're like, wow, I just made a living and a life not even being myself. And this identity crisis comes upon you where you're like, I don't even know who I am. So you can actually win at life. So it sounds crazy, but entertain the idea that you can win at life just being yourself. You don't have to stress about if you're the artist, you don't have to become the doctor to try to have a safe, secure life. You can, there's always a way through the things that excite you, the things that are you, and that make you uniquely you. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Before you go, comment there below. Let me know for you what is one rule for the game of life that you would add to this list. And of course, the best way to stay in touch is to grab my free personal development and weight loss challenge at modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube. You can check out my last two videos right here and right here. <laughs>